My mother-in-law. Ruin my wedding dress eight hours before the wedding. To make things easier, I'll call my mother-in-law Karen, and my fiancé will be Lee. Lee and I have been together for five years and engaged for about 18 months. We met during my senior year of college, which was his first year of grad school. About one year into our relationship, I was introduced to his family, and they seemed wonderful. Karen was always warm and welcoming, and I never had any issues with her. In fact, two years ago, Lee and I even stayed with her and his dad for the entire summer while waiting for our new house to be completed. During that time, there were no problems. We had our privacy, no arguments, and we often went on family outings together. When it came to planning our wedding, we decided to hold it near the town where we first met. One of my college friends, who is from the area, generously offered her family's large estate, complete with an old farmhouse, which made for the perfect wedding venue. We've been planning this day for well over a year, and today was meant to be the happiest day of our lives. But Karen managed to turn it into a nightmare. Karen, along with Lee's dad, siblings, and their spouses, arrived in town on Thursday. We had reserved a block of rooms at the nicest hotel in town and assumed everyone had made their reservations. However, Karen and Lee's dad somehow expected to stay on the estate. This confusion baffles me, especially because during a family dinner, when we secured the estate and the hotel block, I provided hotel information to everyone, including Karen, Lee's dad, and the rest of the family. When Karen had asked if they could stay at the estate, I clearly explained that the estate only had one house, and we needed it for the wedding party to get ready and stay there from Thursday through Sunday. Nevertheless, when they arrived on Thursday without a room booked, we scrambled to accommodate them and gave them the estate house for the night, while Lee and I stayed with my friend who owns the estate. It wasn't a huge deal at the time, but the next morning, Karen refused to get a hotel room, claiming that the block we had reserved was sold out. Lee gently told her that she and his dad couldn't stay at the estate again because my bridal party would be using it to get ready for the wedding, though he didn't mention that part. Karen started crying, and I stepped in, promising to find them another place to stay nearby. We ended up securing a room for them at the second best hotel in town a large corner room, no less, and we even covered the cost for both nights. Last night, my four best friends arrived, and after the rehearsal dinner, we all gathered at the estate house for a cozy night of movies, popcorn, and a few cocktails. It was the perfect, relaxing evening, until everything unraveled this morning. At 8.30 a.m., I was woken up by my mother, who had tears in her eyes. My first thought was that something had happened to my grandfather, who's recently been diagnosed with cancer and isn't expected to make it through the year. But instead, she told me that somehow, my wedding dress had been completely destroyed, and there was no way to save it. My dress was literally cut into strips. My veil had been ripped to shreds. There's nothing salvageable. I put the dress bag in the master bedroom closet when Lee and I arrived on Wednesday evening. I showed it to Lee's sister, sister-in-law, and Karen when they arrived Thursday night. I hadn't looked at it again since. The only people that had access were Karen, Lee's dad, Lee, my bridesmaids, and my mother. My bridesmaids never went into my room last night, and my mother would have no reason to do such a thing so it had to be Karen or her husband. I called Lee, crying, and all I could manage to say was, your mother ruined my dress before handing my phone to my mom to explain. Lee was furious. He called Karen, and she hung up on him when he asked her if she cut up my dress. Then he called his sister, and she told Lee he was being ridiculous, saying Karen would never do such a thing. But when he asked her who could have done it, his sister was at a loss for suspects. My mother, grandmother, and two of my bridesmaids have gone into town to try and find a dress. Fortunately, my aunt is a seamstress and should be able to make some last-minute alterations if they find a dress. I keep trying to stay positive, but my beautiful dress, the one I imagined marrying the love of my life in, is gone. And Karen, oh my god, Karen, I don't want to look at her ever again, much less have her be a part of my wedding. I can't bring myself to tell Lee how I feel, and he hadn't asked, probably because he knows what I'm going to say. I just, I know what matters is that today I'm going to marry my best friend, dress or not. I would marry him in a bathrobe, but I don't know how to focus on the happiness of the day with Karen there. Update 1. To share the full story, my husband and I met at university five years ago. His mother was wonderful to me respectful, and understood boundaries. We got engaged a year and a half ago. We decided to have a kind of destination wedding to where we went to college. It's a kind of small town, but my friend from university has a large estate there with orchards and houses. We decided to marry there. So my husband and I arrived Wednesday night to stay at a house on the estate. I put my dress bag in the master bedroom closet. Thursday evening, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, husband, siblings, and their significant others arrived in a town and came out to see us at the estate house. I showed my mother-in-law and my sisters-in-law my dress. Mother-in-law and father-in-law thought they were staying at the estate. Not with us, but at another house on the property. This was the first time anything like this happened, and even though I thought I had made it clear they needed to secure their own lodging, I figured it was an innocent mistake. See, when we got the estate, we contacted the nicest hotel in town to get a block of rooms. We told everyone at the same time during a family meal. I provided contact info for the hotel, and my mother-in-law asked me about everyone staying at the estate. I told her that space was limited at the estate and left it at that. I realized that I should have specifically told her that she needed to get a room in town, but she also knew that my bridal party was staying with me Friday night, so we could get ready there Saturday morning. 
So when they arrived Thursday, my husband's siblings and spouses had booked hotel rooms, and my mother-in-law and father-in-law thought they were staying on the estate. My husband explained that wasn't the case. They were shocked, so we decided to give them the house for the night and crash with my friend, whose family owns the estate. We did this because the hotel was fully booked, and as late as it was, we just wanted to take the easy way out. Well, Thursday, my mother-in-law refused to go to a hotel because she didn't want to be somewhere without other guests. We ended up finding them a bigger corner room at the second nicest hotel in town where there were other guests staying, and we paid for it. I thought everything was fine. Friday we had the rehearsal, and after the girls and I hung out, had a few drinks and watched movies. Yesterday morning, my mother woke me up at 8.30 and was in tears. She has gone to get my dress to let it air out, and it has been cut into strips. It was cut in four sections from top to bottom, and my veil had been ripped nearly in half. The only people that could have done this were my husband, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, or my bridal party. So I called my husband, and all I could say was, your mother cut up my dress before handing the phone off to my mom. Fortunately, I composed myself enough to talk to him a bit and allow a few people to go into town to try and find a replacement dress. I tried really hard to keep positive. My husband called his mother and asked why she ruined my dress. She hung up on him. Then he called his sister and told her what happened. She swore her mother couldn't have done that, but when asked by my husband, she couldn't suggest another culprit. They decided to confront their mother together. Since a lot of people had a problem with it on my original post, I told my husband not to come to the estate house. We had planned a special first look, and I didn't want to let my mother-in-law ruin that as well. So the outcome of all of this is that my husband told his mother she was not allowed at the wedding. She proceeded to lose her mind. Apparently, this was alarming for the family, since this was entirely out of character for her. However, no one tried to force my husband to change his mind, which made me feel better about continuing with having the wedding. Just in case, we asked a few trusted friends to keep an eye out for her and her father-in-law during our celebration, but they didn't attempt to come. Father-in-law also said that they would pay for the ruined dress and the replacement dress purchased yesterday. There were plenty of people asking where my mother-in-law and father-in-law were, but my husband and his siblings handled it by saying she wasn't feeling like herself, and that sufficed. This morning, our father-in-law called, congratulated us, and apologized for our mother-in-law's actions. She's wanting to apologize, but I've refused to speak to her. I need to calm down and just relax. My husband and I are at the airport waiting for our flight to go on our honeymoon, so I hope the next week is enough time to get myself together. Update 2. Some of you suggested a doctor's exam for my mother-in-law. It's not needed. We found out this morning she has a brain tumor. She and her father-in-law were keeping it from the family so as not to take away from our celebration. They were going to tell us and the rest of the family when we got back from our honeymoon. This is why the father-in-law was so quick to apologize and offer to cover costs. While he wasn't aware of what had happened, he knew the mother-in-law was displaying some odd behavior in the last week. Without giving out too much information, my mother-in-law most likely cut my dress because she thought she was working on it. Given the way it was cut, this makes sense. I still have not spoken to her but she did send me a lengthy email apologizing for her actions, admitting she did this despite not fully remembering, and telling me she understands if I never speak to her again. She did not ask me to forgive and forget, or to apologize for how I feel, and not what she did. I never in a million years would have thought she could have done this, but the process of elimination ended with only her. Also, to better explain a few things about her and her father-in-law staying Wednesday night, mother-in-law did not show up that evening. She seemed completely confused and thought they were staying at one of the houses on the estate. Now knowing about the tumor, this explains her confusion that night and strange behavior and attitude Thursday and Saturday mornings. My husband and I decided to go ahead with our plans at both my mother-in-law's and my father-in-law's request. Both my husband and I wanted to go back home immediately, but my father-in-law said there's nothing we can do about the situation, so we should just try to enjoy ourselves and worry about the rest when we return. I feel terrible about this, and I seriously hope she'll make a full recovery. Also, for those that felt I should be out for blood, I won't lie, I wanted her dead at several points on Saturday morning but she was absolutely wonderful to me the entire time I've known her. We even lived with her and her father-in-law for an entire summer while our house was being finished, and she never once crossed the boundary or was anything but kind and loving. But I do want to make it clear that if she wasn't going through this medical issue, I would never have seen her again, nor would she ever see any children we might have. Another common question was why her father-in-law stayed with her and missed the wedding. At the time he told my husband he felt mother-in-law needed to be watched, and my husband thought he meant mother-in-law might act out again. We now know the father-in-law was worried the mother-in-law might have another episode and could get hurt or hurt someone else. Thank you.